Hello, my name is Peter Baker and welcome to this course on the basics of object-oriented programming. We will begin with an introduction explaining the essentials and then show them in action with some examples. Grasping these concepts will allow you to apply them in the real world and in this course we will be using the programming language ActionScript 3. You are not limited to this language in any way as these concepts apply across all object-oriented languages. As I'm on a Windows machine, we're going to be using the Flash Develop IDE. However, there is an alternative known as Flash Builder that can be used on Windows and Mac systems. Links can be found below. We'll be making use of the Blue Karma source code, a point-and-click game created by Sean Stone. Level 1 is to be released next year, early 2015, so if you want to get into development, building your own applications or games, learning these basics will help you on your path. So, let's begin. So, we should start with the simple question. What is object-oriented programming? In simple terms, it's just a way of doing something, also known as a paradigm, a typical example or pattern of doing something. In this case, a fundamental style of computer programming. First, we need to identify why it is the style languages use these days to get things done. Another paradigm, known as procedural, is another style that is used in certain situations. An example being administrative automation scripts. With a procedural approach, our code, or the writing we place in files that make things happen, is organized into small procedures that use and change our data. It takes input, processes it, and then outputs it in its new form. The problem is that our procedures, also known as functions, have no intrinsic relationship with the data they operate on, and sometimes we need data that is outside of the function's scope to operate. Building big, complex applications and systems in this sort of paradigm can become confusing and unmaintainable. If we want to organize our code in a better way, we can make use of the object-oriented programming paradigm. The data and functions related to a certain entity can be extracted and bundled into its own object. Imagine a game with all the various entities mixed up into one file or script, functions that make a player jump and enemy collision, uh, and a scoreboard tracking changes of the game's current state. Now, this would make things extremely complicated. Plus, making a change for one thing could affect the function of another. And quite frankly, it's not a sensible implementation. But what if we extract the data and functions of one entity, such as a player or an enemy, into its own script or class, so we can be clear what entity we are dealing with when we make changes? You'll find games are designed with the idea of everything being an object, and this is something we will focus on in the next lesson of Object-Oriented Programming. This has been Peter Baker. Thank you for listening. And please don't forget to subscribe to the SMKS channel.